Welcome to this special install video for Macintosh. Now, if you're not working with a Mac, feel free to skip to the next video to learn about Windows or set up one of the cloud infrastructures so we can get a Jupyter Notebook up and running and then get to the fun stuff. This is the version that I am working with. It is Mac OS X Sierra version 10.12.1. So, we're going to go to Google, and instead of just typing in Python, we're going to type in Python space Anaconda, because that includes all of regular Python inside of it. It's hosted here on continuum.io forward slash downloads. And then, since we're working with the Mac, we're going to click on this, and we have 3.6 up here, which is the version we want to be working with. And we'll use the graphic installer to keep things simple. And, of course, we want to support them by giving them our email, but I've already done it, so we're just going to say no thanks at this point. No thank you. Okay, so our download has completed. It was uh, about 450 megabytes, so it took me about like five or six minutes. Depends on your internet. Now, if you're on Mac and you haven't allowed programs to run that are um, unauthenticated by Apple, you're going to get this. And so you're going to want to say keep. We can trust continuum.io as long as this is exactly what's in your browser. You know, you're getting a, a safe product. So I'm going to go down here where the program was downloaded to and click on the install package. So it's going to walk you through a few steps here. Let me get these things out of the way because we don't need them anymore. So anyways, we're going to continue through here. We're going to agree to the license. Yes. And now you have a couple of choices where you want to install, either for everybody who uses your computer or just you. I'm going to install only for me. The advantage to this, in my opinion, is that it's inside your user account, like if you actually look at your hard drive instead of installing here on your root, it's going to be inside of your users and then inside of the name of the user account, which makes it a little easier to clean out. I know when I'm deleting Anaconda stuff that I'm not messing with my system root in any way. I'm going to say install only for me. Um, 1.4 gigabytes. Just take note of how much space it's taking up there and go ahead and click continue. Man, this thing's taking forever. Like as long as I have you here, have you guys thought about the quality of the food that you're eating? Because it can make a big difference in the way that you program. I recommend eating nothing but kale and an oatmeal. Most boring foods in the world. Okay, so the installation was completed successfully. Yay! So we're not going to go into this right now, but it's cool to know that the notebooks that we're about to use, the Jupyter Notebooks, they can be shared online. And Anaconda Cloud is a great place to store them, but also GitHub is probably the more popular place to do it. But it's cool to know that you can share code in that same way. So we're going to go ahead and move it to trash. And all that's saying is the file that was down here, the 500 megabytes that we had, we don't need anymore because the program's installed, so it moved it into the trash can. You can see it right there, which is fine. Now... Now you're probably thinking, well, what's going on? Okay, first off, before we open up Anaconda, let's see what happens. So before I showed you, this is the root of your hard drive. It's going to say just your Macintosh HD. Because we installed it as the user, we're going to click into users and then Dylan Jorgensen, which is the name of my user account, but yours will be whatever yours is. And then you'll see this new folder here called Anaconda. This stuff is all new. Now, if you want to click on this Anaconda Navigator here, it's the easiest way to totally get up and running. Now, I want to teach you about the terminal later, but this is actually the second time I recorded this video because I got feedback from the students saying, like, don't touch the terminal. We're brand new. So this is going to be the best way for us to open up our Jupyter Notebook, which was installed with the package. But also keep in mind that it's not the only place you can find this. So even though we're inside uh, the user account Anaconda, it's also going to be um, linked to inside of your general application. So you might be more familiar with opening up programs this way. However your thing is for like launching programs, I use Alfred sometimes, so I'll have like Anaconda up here. You might use Spotlight, and you can go find an, uh, Anaconda here, or you can go into Applications. And then there's even the other thing, which I forgot, where it like makes a grid. It kind of looks like an iPhone. It'll be in there, too. So any of these are all the same thing, but as long as you can find Anaconda-Navigator.app, double-click on it, and it will bring you to this screen. So, yes, I'd like to help improve Anaconda. That's a personal choice. I like to give it back. You don't have to. Okay, don't show me this again. Now, you can see here there's a few options in the left. We'll just keep it on home for right now, and this is by far the most important one for our use case. For this course, we're going to be using the Jupyter Notebook, which is a web application that will allow us to interface with Python in a really simple, easy-to-use way. So go ahead and click Launch, and you will now be launching your first 
Jupyter Notebook. Get ready for it. Incredible. Absolutely incredible. There it is. The important thing to realize about this is that it launched a server, which means that if you look up here, you're not seeing your hard drive, specifically like uh, Macintosh HD forward slash user. You're seeing this colon 888. And this is actually a web server. It's running on your local environment, so you don't actually need to be on the internet. But it's not that different than if you were on a website somewhere else, if the server was running in the cloud, for example, um, which means you interface with it a little bit differently. So this actually mimics my computer's hard drive. We want to go down and get to the desktop. So OK, so right here I have this O2. This is the actual movie recording I just recorded a second ago. But you'll see that when we click on desktop, there it is, okay? Our movies one and two. I'll put them over here so you can see. I've got two screens. That's the only reason you're not seeing it. But movies one and two are right here. Now, we want to open up a new Python 3 notebook. So on your computer, you have Word documents, you have spreadsheets, you have JPEGs, you have image files, things like that. We now have notebooks. It's a new file type. And it's going to specifically be something we're working with this course. So go ahead and open up a new Python notebook. When we do this, you'll see right here on my desktop, it was created untitled. And now we will call it shoe. And you'll see that it's now shoe.ipynb, ipython notebook. Is, it was originally called the ipython notebook, but they uh, did more than just Python and kind of unified their name under Jupyter or something. Anyways, side tangent there. Here we are in an interface. This is where we're going to actually be entering our Python code. So even on other tutorials, when you're seeing people type in an IDE or in terminal, just know those are different ways to interface with Python, which doesn't necessarily have a graphical user interface. But this is the one we're going to use. And it executes line by line. So we're going to go into this more in future videos. But just to show you the most basic thing every programmer does, they write their very first program, which is a print statement and they print using parentheses, hello, dog. Most common thing you'll ever see. Now, just because I typed it doesn't mean it's executed. This is more like writing my story. But to have it read back to you, we need to execute the cell, to actually have the computer go in and read these words, and then actually behind the scenes translate them into a language that's more specific for computers so then we're going to want to run this cell, which actually means execute the code that's in here. And you can do shift enter to make this happen, or you can just hit this button right here, which does the exact same thing, and it executes one line of this code. So let's go ahead and run this. Ah, printed back hello dog. All right. You're a programmer now. That's, that's the basics. That's all you need to do to consider yourself a programmer. So you have written a program. It prints out the word hello dog. Congratulations. Now, one more step is we have a bunch of files that we're going to be working with throughout this course. I'm going to show you how to download those. OK, so here's the URL that we ultimately want to get to. Now, you can go to GitHub's homepage and then type in Dylan Jorgensen. And then you can click on Repositories and find the one titled Marshmallow. Or go directly to this URL. And I'll make a bit.ly for it to make it a little more simple. But github.com forward slash Dylan Jorgensen, which is my full name, no capitals and no spaces, forward slash Marshmallow, which is the name of the repository. So other names will take you to other repositories. They won't have files that have anything to do with this course. But Marshmallow has all of the files we're going to be using for chapter one, two, and three. Now, the easiest way to download these is to simply click here on clone or download and then download the zip file for now. There's some really cool things we can do with version control later, but I don't want to make it too complicated to start with. So just download it. Now, a zip file, if you don't know what it is, is just a compressed file. So if you have a folder that's full of different files and you zip them together, it makes one file that has all of those files inside of it. Now, we can just double click on it with Mac OS X. It will automatically unzip it. So you'll see it went from having one file here to now being a folder full of multiple files. Now, if we take this folder and just drag it onto our desktop right there, or just drag it onto our desktop over here, which I'm going to do, and then go back to our Jupyter Notebook. Remember, we have the same structure here as we would if we were searching through our hard drive using Finder. There's Anaconda, um, which is inside of my um, user profile. We can't go all the way to the root, but we're inside of our user profile. But here's desktop. Click on that. And then like before, it has our shoe Python notebook. It has those two movie files, one and two. And then it's got our new Marshmallow Master. So if you click on this and go inside of Marshmallow Master, you're going to see some more folders. There's a template there that we'll use in a minute. 
or that I, I use to make these things. Um, and if we want to go to, let's say, mutability, which will be our next uh, how video, we can click on this, 0202, and it's going to bring up an IPython notebook that has all the code we're going to be working with. So we can click here. Um, you actually probably won't see the drop downs. This is something uh, I've added. This is an added feature. So don't worry if you're not seeing the drop downs. I forgot about that. It's just a thing that I can show you how to install, but it's not important, just kind of a convenience thing. But see, now we can actually click on these and we can run through them and they're going to execute. So it's going to print uh, you know, that variable and we'll talk about all this stuff in the future. But the point is we're now running this Python code line by line, which is different than a lot of programs which will run it all at the same time. But this is going to help us learn at the very beginning. And there you go. So now you have downloaded the folder that has all of the files in it. You can also make your own by going up here to new and just creating notebooks at your whim. And you can move this folder into other directories, whatever kind of logical folder structure works for you. Uh, you know, if you followed me this far, you are up and running with Python. Pat yourself on the back. Congratulations. And now let's learn how to code. Subscribe to the Mnemonic Academy YouTube channel for daily uploads that will help you learn amazing concepts through effortless associations.